Let me tell you how dirty the music business was back in the day. The Force MD signed with Tommy Boy Records, Tom Silver and pours out $2,500 for them to split. Now, when they signed them contracts, there were no lawyers, no parents, none of that. So, TC and Steve's dad quits his job and becomes their manager. And the first thing he does is take the contract and he takes it to a lawyer. And the lawyer tells them that this is the most fucked up shit he ever seen. But since every member of the group was legally an adult, there was nothing anybody could do. They had signed the dotted line. The paperwork was going to stay the same. But Tom did say if their album went gold or platinum, he was willing to renegotiate the contract. Love Letters comes out. Itching for a Scratch is top 20, and Tears is top 5. So everybody's like, I know we going at least gold. We got these big ass songs out. So Tom Silverman walks in and is like, y'all almost made it. Y'all were real close, but y'all didn't quite go gold. So now, Chillin' comes out. One plus one is top 30. I hear I go again, it's top 20. I want to know your name, top 30. And Tender Love is just the damn biggest song on the planet. Everybody's like, oh, I know we going gold now. Hell, just by Tender Love, we should go gold. But shit, we got Tender Love and Here I Go Again, I Wanna Know Your Name. We got all of them. Hell, we should motherfucking be going platinum. They still didn't go gold. So now, everybody feeling kind of funny. Like, damn, how do we not go gold when we got this big ass song that's on soundtrack of a movie? But remember, if they had went gold or platinum, they was going to have to renegotiate their contract, right? And this is for all the young cats that don't know how ruthless the music business used to be back in the day. You had record labels who would intentionally stop the album from selling a certain amount. So the Force MDs reached out to Hush Management, whose clients included Freddie Jackson and Melissa Morgan in hopes of improving their deal. We got together and went to the label and set forth a renegotiation. And that renegotiation actually helped them. One result was that the band members moved out of New York and bought houses together in the Poconos area of rural Pennsylvania. Levert. Because we got back from the Madonna tour. We got back from the Madonna tour. Casanova was number one. When Casanova went down, Love is a House went number one. We both had number one songs in the same two weeks. So they put us on tour together. And boy, that was a battle every night. Just really? friendly competition. But it was great. And they, they, and like Mark right now, Mark is the only one alive from the group, but he, he'll tell you. We were, we was, that, that was good, good, good touring right there, man. I just miss those guys, man. And you know, Gerald blowing up on his own, doing his thing, I already knew, I said, damn, them OJs, when I say, they got two sons that got the same voices, that's really crazy, you know. That's, that, that, that was good, that was good. Head to toe, dressed in lace, her day face soon. As she walked inside the place, head start turning, guys couldn't resist. She gave Tris a gift, skin playing like a car like this. I don't know, maybe so, even though I don't mind a little touch and go. The way she feels the sex of me. We always want to be remembered as cool, intellectual brothers who know what they're doing in life, you know? And that's what the Force and D's is all about. The experience came from, like, doing talent shows and on Staten Island Ferry, we used to travel and make money. 
people, put our hat out, people throw money in and sing it in the streets of Times Square. So we learn to sing in front of <clears throat> all races and creative people. And it's, it's natural to us. We, we work very hard. I mean, you know, it's, that's the only way to do it. And it's not work to us. It's, you know, what we love to do. So, you know, like Steve, me, Steve, Merck, T, you know, we, we, this is what we love to do. This we've been doing from day one, you know, through high school all the way up until now, you know. Uh, we make it a fun atmosphere when we work. We don't want to be very really tensed or nothing like that. We want all of the elements to be just right. The lighting has to be right in the studio, such as when you're doing a ballad, so you can get that, that full effect. The best way to know the Force of D's is to come see us live in concert. We're very good at performing live. We're dedicated to our fans. We have a, a lot of people who believe in the Force of D's. I think they're gonna fall in love with the Force and D's all over again. Talking about the old fans we had, plus our new fans that we'll probably gather off this album. They're gonna really like this because it's something special. We just feel very strong about this album. You know, it's gonna take us to the plateau that we wanna go. Teddy Riley wanted to work with the group. He wanted to do two songs for 100 grand. But, you know, Tommy Boy didn't wanna pay that. The demand for the Force MDs had declined at that point, and then you just have to say, do you want to continue to dig the hole deeper? What's going to change in the group? When the contract with Tommy Boy came to a close, everybody it was like pretty much free agents, and that was pretty much it. I think the experience with Tommy Boy was like, which is something that a lot of artists need to learn from. It's like, you know, Tommy Boy was an independent label, and later on he got picked up by Warner Brothers. But being an independent label, even though your overhead is cheap, you make more money on your records and stuff like that. But you got to make sure that, you know, that company is with you pertaining to competing with what's out there in the marketplace. Because being an independent, Forsome D's is being as talented as the Forsome D's were. And Forsome D's could compete with any group that was out there. It just didn't have the marketing dollars or the main support it needed from the label to make it, you know, reach those certain benchmarks in order to be competitive or be, you know, in a better space that they've been in. But at the end of the day, you know, Tommy Boy was definitely instrumental in breaking the group and putting the group on a platform that the world was able to know who the group was. But looking at it down the road and looking at like groups that come from Mot Motown and, big, you know, labels that, you know, had, uh, how to say, labels that was able to nourish and develop artists, whereas Tommy Boy for the R&B probably was just a little too harder for him because the break of R&B artists is it's a little more expensive. Whereas like the hip hop was a little more cheaper to uh, break, produce, I mean promote and produce at the same time. Mm -hmm. But for some of these, you know, like Tommy Boy, like I said, at that time and those contracts were what they were at that time. A lot of people had contracts that was pretty much, uh, you know, in the best interest of the label, not the artist. And Nelson, who'd been diagnosed with diabetes and was fired from the band for failing to keep his weight in check. The record company used to come down on me. They're trying to make him lose weight. He was close to 400, 300 and something. He was large. That was one of the toughest things I ever had to do, you know. You know, the group was very important to all of us and to say, Merck, you know, if you don't do this, man, we, we gotta do this without you. My nephew Khalil said he had a change of heart and he wanted to come back with the group. But the uncut story was, out of all the members of the group, I said no. Really? The reason I said no is because you left when we was crying. So when you left, we put Trisco in the force of needs, that was it. Yes. But after we made those hit records, when you wanted to come back, I was out moving. So when Khalil comes back to the group, Khalil is real aggressive and is just a natural leader. So when he gets there, he kind of starts running shit a little bit. And Trisco's attitude was, we've been putting in work. You know, we've been traveling recording songs, you know, putting our name out there, building a brand, you wasn't there for none of that. So how you gonna come back and instantly try to be the boss? Trisco always felt like he was ostracized and like he was, you know, because he wasn't a family member. He always had that chip on his shoulder about, you know, not getting leads because he's not, you know, the son of this or whatever. Jesse's their uncle. I'm their friend, but it was still, 
a Lundy thing. You feel what I'm trying to say? So in 1990, Trisco Pearson left the Force MD. For a while, the Force MDs kept going. Khalil Lundy rejoined the group, along with a singer named Sean Waters and a newly sober Jesse Daniels following his release from prison. time and then he found out because you know he's overweight yeah so he, <clears throat> he the doctor told him he got to lose weight so mercury lost a lot of weight lost it kind of fast and next thing you know uh he just had a heart attack out of the blue mm -hmm. of a massive heart attack a fatal heart attack out of the blue i was just talking with him uh, this way i was just talking about we were just talking about doing a record for some C's, you know, taking it back and do a little hip hop record with For Some C's. And we said, yeah, bet. And next thing you know, uh, two weeks later, Mark, we just dropped dead. And wow. Was and when he passed, it was really sad because um, Merck was a great guy and a, f a, f a fun guy. You know, just sent like shockwaves throughout the whole, you know, hip hop R&B industry. Because everybody loved Mercury, you know, I mean, everybody. His funeral was huge. People came from everywhere. If you were at that funeral, you would have knew how many people loved him. Everybody on Staten Island was there. How did Dr. Rock pass? He passed with AIDS. Yeah. He had AIDS. Yeah, he was a okay. DJ in, in Dallas, uh -huh. Texas, yeah. and uh, he, he was asked, he was out there wiggling, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. TC had called me and said, uh, he said, yo, man, I was holding some food in my hand and it just dropped out of my hand. And you know he's, he's he's a joker, so we joke and he laughs. Just food, I seen the pancakes slow motion hitting the ground, pants. So we laugh and whatnot. Then like a couple of months later, he said, "Yo, I fell down the steps." I said, "Yo, this is, I said this shit is for real." I said, "Yo, this is for real, B." So me and my father went over there and yeah. we <clears throat> brought him to the hospital, and he took you know tests and stuff. And they said, "Oh, I think he may have Lyme because you know I mean the poker nose yeah, yeah, and you know, a lot yeah. of ticks and stuff like that." Yeah. So we thought it, it might have been Lyme. So we was like, "Okay, it's Lyme. T, you good?" So then, uh, you know, the doctor called us back. She said, yo, the doctor said I need to come down there ASAP. Right. I said, okay, bunk, bunk. So me and my father, we went and grabbed him. We went down there. And the doctor, Sabria, he was. He said, listen, he said, uh, he has uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. And we said, yo, okay, what's that? so what's the deal with that? He said, well, uh, it's terminal. And we said, what do you mean terminal? Yeah, he's like, uh, like two years. Two years. We well, like, two years what? And we was like, yeah, so you, you know. Yeah, I remember the day, Sway. I remember the day, say, Yo, Steve, I can't sing no more, man. Because <sighs> it, it attacks all the muscles in your body. It attacked his muscles in his throat. And he, he was trying to say, ah, ah, ah. Uh, I said, I can't sing no more. Yeah. It, 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 it really hurt it, man, because he, like I, I said it on Unsung, like he had a, a medical book. Me and him sitting in the car, he's reading. He said, Yo, I'm just looking at my symptoms. I can have this called neuritis, this, this, this. And he's read, and this one's called amyotrophic lotus sclerosis. Mm -hmm. So if I got this, it's I can rap. die in two years. Rap and around, I, and yeah. I looked at my brother's face, Man, I hope that ain't the one you got, yeah. man. Like, I mean, it was like every day it was getting worse and worse. He couldn't dress himself no more. He couldn't sing no more. I took him to church in a wheelchair. He got sick and sick and sick and sick. He say, said, say your last goodbyes. And we was all in there crying, looking at T.C. And one thing that I remember that T.C. said before he couldn't talk anymore. This is exact words. Jesse, don't y'all be fighting and arguing, man. It's acting stupid. Don't do it, man. I'm not going to be able to make it. And I was like, all right, T.C., man. I won't do it, man. 
She said, I love you, Steve. So the next day, he's on life support. When people leave you like that and they so close, it, take, it takes a lot from me, like part of my heart. And, I can't, and you can't bring it back. It, it's so missed, it's scary. You know what I mean? It's just like, you know, he, he was definitely here for his period to do what he had to do. When he got ill, he was like, Kyle Lil, you gonna have to step up to the plate, man. When he passed, it was like, I'm committed to do what he did. When I said no, I was outvoted. So when he let Kyle Lil with the group, what happened was it seems like everything started turning against me. Wow. I, I felt like, why was I wrong? Because I felt that I was right. Because when I said no, I meant no for a reason. We started doing shows, concerts, events. Everything was going good. But what I felt is that my nephew, Khalil, started pushing the guys away from me. This is the real story. So when I felt that way, I felt like everybody was pointing their finger at me. And I started easing and slowly out of the group. Wow. And then for one knowing, Jesse Daniels was no longer in the force of things. Wow. Okay, this is the real story. Stop right there. Now. Long day work so hard to the sun is going down. Somebody say, that's the sound of Though not a group member, Jesse Daniels still sings with them on occasion and works to maintain his sobriety while raising four kids as a single dad. If you know you've been messing up and you know that you got kids, don't ruin yourself and ruin your kids. Because if you mess up, your kids are gone. That's what keeps me going. It keeps me staying positive. Hello, how you doing? My name is Michael. And uh, those are good songs with my brothers. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Jermaine, Tito, Randy, those are golden moments. So let's try something, guys. Here we go. You knocked me off of my feet, now, baby. Every season, baby, I kill zone. And you give me peace. You got to clap. I never, never know. They're doing shows. Still sound pretty much the same, you know. Uh, God rest the soul of the brothers we lost. My brother TC, which is our brother and our uncle. Uh, Mercury, rest in peace. But we are here to carry the torch right now, you know, to keep the sound going on. We still keeping the torch, keeping the tradition going on. Uh, we got a lot of events coming up, so we want everybody to definitely yeah. come check us. We're going to sing a little bit. When we get a chance, to let y'all know. Yeah, yeah. We, matter of fact, if you're looking for some bees, you can look for us. We're going to be in Terrytown. We're going to be in Austin. Mm -hmm. It's the 3rd and 4th of April. Right. We're going to be at Great Adventures in right. May. And we will be at uh, Columbia, South Carolina, and we'll be in Boston. These are up-and-coming events. You know, stay posted on YouTube. We're going to try to hit you every uh, two weeks or something different. If y'all didn't know, just in case y'all didn't know, uh, on the president playlist, you know, Force of Bees is one of his favorite groups, a group that the president of the United States listens to. That's right. And for all the promoters out there that's looking for the Force of Bees and you want to be able to reach us, you can, you know, contact you know, Force of Bees at Wiseman Entertainment or Wiseman Music at Yahoo.com or you can call directly 570-236-3895. It's 570-236-3895. And Jesse, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, you know, it's like we out here doing it, you know. 
the shows is coming out successfully. Everybody's there. We you know it's like it's, it's been a beautiful experience. The Force of D's is definitely still out here. But no, 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 no. somebody asked me. Do we still do the impersonation? Oh, yeah. Do we still sing? Like, <laughs> I'm just trying to, you know, because I mean, we was reading the blogs and we was reading YouTube and they said, the Force of D's, they dead, they like, no, we still, we still, still, we still put it in the Force of D's. We, like I said, we always doing shows and if it's not in New York, it's out of state. And again, like I said, you're interested in booking the Force of D's, give us a holler. And he just got over cancer. He's on remission right now. Give it up for Trisco. Trisco. <laughs> Let's go. 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 Let's go.
each, each one we talked to always said, hey, man, y'all got to keep going. Y'all mm. could, except Mercury, because mm. Mercury just came yeah, like yeah. and over. But, you know, Trisco, TC said, y'all got to keep going. Now, Jesse D, our uncle, mm-hmm. uh, he was he's in and out of the group right, right now. He's he's on the sideline right now. He's on ice. He's on ice. He's on ice. Yeah. This is why we recruited our nephew, Zion. Yeah. He's a Got great it. singer. He Beautiful teaches, voice. Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. You know, okay. Good looking to the ladies. Mm-hmm. 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 What, what look? The good news is, is that we're talking and we're talking about a big reunion. Wow. This reunion is going to be very special because it's been a long time coming. And I need all my fans to show up, show out, show love, and have a good time. Because once we come back all together, it's going to be a hell of a show. Let me let you know one more thing, too. This is very important for all the fans to know. I feel hurt about one thing. That when the force of these put R&B and hip hop together as combined, we really never got credit. That's true. Because that's true. It's 2019. Yes. And people are still doing hip hop and R&B. Yes. Yes. It's common right now. Millions of dollars. Back when they did it, it did uh, not exist. That's right. Jesse, let me tell you something, man. That's what's up. It's been a pleasure to talk. To- let me set the record straight so y'all can hear it from yeah. us. That all these outside entity people are trying to, you know, Jesse was found by Tender Love, his girlfriend, uh, found in his apartment. Uh, they found him on the floor, uh, and she thought, you know, something was wrong. She she felt that it, 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 something wasn't right, and you know, Jesse she found mm-hmm. Jesse on the floor, not on his bed. He's laying on the floor, and uh, she called me and said, Steve, something's not right. Jesse's laying on the floor. He's not moving. And she FaceTimed me, and I seen Jesse Lane, and I knew he looked a little funny. I said, don't look right. I said, make you call. She said, I already called 911. They're on their way there now. So 911 finally got there. I told Tender Love to wait outside because he wasn't a family member, but she had me on the phone. And uh, she, she, she said, the, uh, <clears throat> the cop came back out. He was in there for a couple of minutes. I mean, like maybe 10, 15 minutes. They came back out and says, do you know any of his family member? He says, yes, I have his nephew on the phone, Stephen Lundy. And uh, when the cop came to the phone, he says, are you his nephew? I said, yes, I'm his nephew, Stephen Lundy. And he said, I'm sorry for your loss. And that's when I knew that Jesse was gone. When the cop said that, I'm sorry for your loss. And I had to make sure I was not... Nothing was wrong in my ears. I said, are you saying that Jesse passed away? And he says, yes, Jesse is de- he's deceased. That's when all the reality. Yeah, yeah that, that's when I, Steve. I actually went there and saw for myself as well. Yeah. 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 Steve. God, you know, I was worried, so worried about him. Before these days, before this happened, I was just so worried about him, worried about where we, he was. Didn't see him posting on Facebook. I just knew something was wrong because Jesse loves the camera. I, I know him. He loves the camera. He loves attention. He just loves that energy. Y'all know him. Y'all know him. He loves that energy. And I didn't see it in a couple of weeks. And it gave me a worry in my heart that something was not right. My heart is so heavy, y'all. It's so heavy. I just don't know it. I was getting so much, so many texts and stuff, and I just trying to talk to all that, all of y'all at one time, to thank y'all for all the condolences. Thank you, D Nice, for the tribute he gave us last night. We know Jesse is super talented, energetic, sparkling personality. Make you laugh. I don't care if you're in the downest point. Make you laugh. He was just that type of person. We know he's fighting a battle, but still, he's still Jesse, no matter what, he was still Jesse. I thank God that blessed me, but my brother Khalil and Zayim, we've been continuing on the legacy, but we was trying to get Jesse back. I was waiting to get him back. He was trying to kick the, break the habit he had to try, he was trying to get back, get him back. It just kills me, man. I call him every day.
yes, he was found in his apartment, uh, deceased. What no one, no, I can't say, I'm not putting no rumors about no drugs. We don't know what happened to him. We don't know until we get all the answers back from autopsies on the people. So please do not make any rumors of Jesse, this, that, because we don't know yet until, I don't know what I go through. I go through, I just think about the other members at times in my head, like, you know, I, I, it's a lot, it's a lot, y'all. Get our flowers for the four some D's, man. Well, I'm still here. We'll get our flowers for the four some D's, man. We overlook underrated people. What people's a lot of people do know what we did for this industry, for this music, this R and B hip hop, man. God left me here to do it. Get it for us. They've left an indelible mark on music. And for that, we should all be grateful. Good quality, classic music that never dies. For people to see us now, we just like to perform and sing. My heart's to people. From, you know, when we came back, it was like, you know, we went to different countries, you know, different cities stuff like that. And they didn't speak our language, but they moved the voice to our songs. The legacy of the 4 D's is cats that came from a forgotten barrel and brought some unique, you know, flavor to the industry.